Good morning, everybody. If you'd like to take your seats. Oh, I can't see you. I don't know if to keep my glasses on or off. If I put them on, I can see you. Ooh, yeah. And if I take them off, I can't. If I take them off, I can't see you. And, uh, but if I keep them on, I can't read either, so it all gets a bit complicated. Bifocals, I think, are in my near future, I think. But welcome today. Um, yeah, I know we're going to give a couple of notices later, but a certain man, young man, is 92 years old on Tuesday. Who could that possibly be, Father Don? Hooray! <laughs> well, we won't sing happy birthday now, but we will sing happy birthday when you, <clears throat> a bit later on, because there isn't a surprise party in the hall for you afterwards at all that I'm not allowed to mention. <laughs> but at 10.30, we're in the hall for refreshments. Be there. <clears throat> And also, uh, those of you who know Marianne Herbert, uh, on behalf of the church, she's moved to England now permanently, and uh, on behalf of the church, we sent her flowers and chocolates, or fudge, was it a fudge? Brownies. We sent her some lovely flowers and brownies, and she received those and says a massive thank you. So if you need to reach out to Marianne, she's still, she's still picking up emails, isn't she? Yeah. And we've got her email address if you'd like to send her a message of well wishes, and we can pass that on to and we've got her address if you'd like to write to her. There you go. Isn't that lovely? Well, welcome this morning. The theme is, did you know it was Ascension Day this week? You're all nodding, yeah? You knew it was Ascension Day. So our theme of our service day is uh, going to be later on, the Ascension. Uh, but before we sing together our first song, let's get ready by praying our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, you know everything we need and want and nothing is hidden from you. We are here to worship you, to pray for the needs of the world, and to listen to your word. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, and open our hearts to your love. Amen. Okay, now we're going to sing, and can I check for the children out? Can I have the children out into the front with me here? Because I do need some help with this one. So children, that's it, brilliant, stand there, and this excellent, Midori, come down here, we need some help. Girls need some help. Brilliant. <laughs> Hello. Brilliant. Excellent. I do need some help with this. Would you all please be upstanding? I'm going to give Helen this to control the words. We're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. And we're going to, we're going to um, we can do the actions with me and we're going to get everybody else singing the actions too. And Helen's going to crank it up. Our choir, our boys are ready. Excellent. <laughs>
children, you may, you may take your seats. That's my workout for the day done. <laughs> it's a great way to start our worship, praising God, thanking God for Jesus, remembering what he's done for us. But also as we come into God's presence, we remember that God is God, perfect and holy, and that we, like a dog run, running through bushes, pick up burrs along the way. Have you ever done that? When you walk through bushes, you get those little things stuck to you, those little spiky seeds. And sin clings to us a bit like that as we go through life. We make, our, make decisions, we do things, and we know hurt God, hurt others. So let's have a moment of quiet now just to reflect on God's mercy. So say sorry in our hearts for the things we've thought, said and done. As we come into the presence of Almighty God, who loves us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Know that you are made clean by God. The incarnation, that means, that means the second person, the Holy Trinity, becoming human in Jesus Christ. The incarnation. His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and his glorious ascension are so that you could be made clean, made holy, so that God's Holy Spirit can come and live in you and minister to you. So know his forgiveness. Know that you are loved by him. Amen. In response to being forgiven, let's sing Waymaker. You are here in our midst by your spirit. Let's stand and sing.
please remain standing. Holy God, we're here to praise you. Whether we feel like praising you or not, you are always worthy of our praise. That's why we sing, that's who you are, our way maker, our miracle worker, our promise keeper. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being here present with us today. Thank you for all you've done for us and will do for us in the future. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, 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 Just remain standing for a moment. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. And so we pray. We praise and thank you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we obey your command, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of your precious Son. Would you please be seated? On the night you were betrayed, you took the bread. After giving thanks, you broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you, and as you eat it, remember me. This is my body, broken for you, and as you eat it, remember me. On the night you were betrayed, you held the cup. After giving thanks, you lifted it up. This is my blood, poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. This is my blood. thank you for the wine and for the bread for we see the life you gave and the blood you shed and we remember your wondrous love you gave your body you shed your to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, many, we are are one body, body, because we all share in the one bread. bread. So dear friends, receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ with faith and thanksgiving. Remember that he gave himself for you. Remember that he died for you. And allow him to feed and nourish your body mind and spirit.
Let's say thank you to God together. Father God, we thank you for Jesus, our Saviour, our King, and our best friend. Thank you for giving him to us and for feeding our hearts today. Amen. Well, bless you all. We're going to sing in a moment, but before we sing, we're going to invite our children to head to their groups. I think Shireen said she's on her way for the older ones. Yeah, I got a message saying she's on her way. She might be a tiny bit late, but if the older ones want to go too, that's great. She will be turning up. But if you go with Nikki and Helen at the moment and hang out with them, and then Shireen will rock up very shortly, I'm told. <laughs> it's those Sunday morning swim meets, I think. Well, Holy God, thank you so much for the children and young people of this church. We pray that you bless them, encourage them this morning. May they have an amazing time together. Lord, we thank you for our leaders too. Lord, bless them. Amen. Let's stand and sing this ascension hymn. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Please stand.
please be seated for our Bible reading. Thank you. Good morning. The Bible reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time will you, where, will you, when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not to you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, of Ephesus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Well, good to see you all this morning. And uh, it's Ascension Day. Well, it's Ascension Sunday. Ascension we celebrated on a Thursday. And I don't know about you, but Ascension is one of those festivals in the Christian calendar that sometimes get a little, gets a little bit overlooked. Or we don't really know what to do with it. And sometimes we even forget it. And we don't really celebrate the ascension of Jesus. And I wonder it's because we don't know exactly how to categorize it. It doesn't fit neatly into a box, does it? Jesus kind of ascending and disappearing from sight in the clouds. And where's he gone? Where's he going? Why didn't he stay? Uh, and it's all a bit funny. And I wonder if it's because it bre- uh, kind of, if you like, it spans both the earthly, the physical, and also the spiritual, the heavenly. It kind of, it's in both camps, isn't it? One minute he's in the earthly realm, and the next minute he's in the spiritual realm. I wonder if that's why we find it difficult to categorize, or we don't know exactly how to celebrate the ascension of Jesus, or how it fits into the, the bigger narrative. Now, I, I've got a confession to make, because I knew I was preaching on ascension this week. This week. I thought, I, I need to, I, I, what am I going to preach? How am I going to understand it? And as I was thinking about it, it raised more and more questions for me. In fact, I lay awake nearly all night thinking about this subject. Aren't you pleased I spent all night thinking about it so I could preach this morning? No, not really. I spent all night worrying about it. Because there were so many things I didn't really understand. Or things, why didn't he, if he was a resurrected Jesus, could he just stay here? And why did he go back? Why did he go back to the Father? And I thought, well, I know, the, I understand the gospel message. And I thought, well, okay, I understand the, the, the gospel message. I understand the incarnation of Jesus. And I understand that why Jesus came. The gospel message is very simple. Jesus came so that we could be made holy, so that the Holy Spirit could come and live in us, so that we could work together with God for the restoration of the world, that we might have life, as Jesus calls it, in all its fullness. I understand the gospel. It makes sense to me. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, but, well, when I read the Old Testament, there's so much I don't understand. So I want to come on to that in a minute, but there's lots of things I didn't, I didn't really get, if that makes sense. Okay, well, let, me, okay let me give you an example. If, if, if Jesus came so that the Holy, we could be filled with the Holy Spirit, and we know the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost, how come the Holy Spirit fills people in the Old Testament then? How come the Holy Spirit was already filling people before the Holy Spirit came? 
Psalm 139, where can I flee from your spirit, O Lord? If I go to the mountaintops, you're there. If I go to the bottom of the sea, you're, you're there. If I go to the depths, if I go across the sea, you're there. If I soar away from you, you're still there. I, your right hand guides me, you're with me. The Holy Spirit filled kings in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit was there hovering over the waters from the beginning of creation. And hang on a minute, if Jesus died so that we could be made clean and we could be resurrected one day, how come people believed in resurrection before Jesus turned up? Mary says, uh, Mary and Martha, Mary says to Jesus, Lazarus will be raised on the last day when we're resurrected. They believed in resurrection. Well, hang on, how could you be resurrected if Jesus came so that we could be resurrected? How could they believe in resurrection before resurrection was a thing, if that makes sense? And it started to confuse me, and I got a bit discombobulated, and I was lying in bed, and I was awake, and I was trying to figure all this out. Well, hang on a minute. This isn't making much sense. Something else me must be at play. And as I lay there in bed, I had a revelation. Now, I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb here this morning, theologically. So bear in mind, I'm kind of edging my way out onto a little bit of a theological branch this morning, because I'm a logical person. I studied computer science. I like logic. I want things to fit neatly together. I need to make sense of stuff. And there's stuff in the gospel uh, that kind of makes sense, and there's stuff that doesn't make sense. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to ratify them together, and, and something occurred to me. And it occurred to me that we need to get a, an eternal perspective on what God is like. So we're going to start there. God, if you will, is outside of time. That makes sense, right? That's a, yeah? God has to be. If God is God, God is outside of time. And we know that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I want you to imagine, if you will, God being outside of time. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This community of God. This dance of God. Three in one, one in three. All members of the Godhead. The Father, the second person, the Son, the third. The Holy Spirit. All existing. Having always existed, always will exist. So God is outside of time. Then you have creation. And creation is in time. Time and space. And human beings, we have our place in time. We live in linear time. And creation started with the creation of the world. And the creation, if you like, starts. And we are in history. We have a, we have a past and we move from our pe- pre- uh, past and we move into our future. So therefore, we exist and all creation exists in time and space. This is, I'm, this, I'm, not, nothing, I'm telling you anything you don't know, right? This will make sense. Yeah? But if God is outside time, think about this. God is therefore present at every moment in space and time that ever has been, ever is, and ever will be. That makes logical sense to me if I'm a, 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 from a scientific point of view, I suppose, or a theological point of view, or a philosophical point of view, that God is ever present at every point in space-time. So God is present existing uh, in, the, in the past, God is existing in the present, and God is existing in the future. God can be at any point in Creation, because after all, God made creation. God is outside. So God is present at every point in history that instantaneously. Does that make sense? That makes logical sense to me. If God wasn't, God wouldn't be God. Does that make sense? We, however, exist in space times. For us, time is linear. We move from a past into a present. And if you will, people from humanity, people have lived and they have died and had their being all the way from when humans evolved as sentient beings, they lived and died. And you imagine, billions of us have lived in the past and are living now. We have our being, we have our living now, we're going to live, we're going to die. And there are people in the future that are going to live and die and have their being as well, all the way through this space-time. We live in this linear, but God is outside of time. So I understand, so it makes sense to me that, uh, that, that God was there. But God was there right at the beginning. The Holy Spirit has been in the world working, and God is, Holy Spirit's here now, and the Holy Spirit's in the future. Now, let me come on to why this is important. Because we know that the world has fallen. We know that the world is broken in some way. We know that we live in a fallen world. We know that we are made in the image of God. We are God-like with a small g. Now, I use this analogy that when we go through life, and every single person throughout history who's gone through life, who's made in the image of God, has made mistakes. We've all gone our own way. We've all put ourselves first. And I imagine it like a dog running through bushes. You ever do this and the the dog picks up burrs? 
You ever seen that? Or when you walk through, you get them on your clothing, those little spiky things that you can't get off, you know what I mean? And, and, and sin is like that. When we go through life, we pick up sin. Like a dog or like a person walking through bushes collects those burrs and they stick to you and they don't come off. So every person in the world is like that. We pick up sin. So we have a problem with sin. So God knows this. And so the incarnation of Jesus is what makes us clean. Isn't it? This is, I'm, hopefully I'm not telling you anything you don't know already, yeah? This is the gospel message. So Jesus, who has knit together the second person of the Holy Trinity, sorry, of the Holy Trinity of God, the second person, the Son, comes in the form of Jesus Christ. He's knit together in Mary's womb. He's born. He lives. He's, he dies. Death can't hold him. He's resurrected. And then he's ascended back to the Father. And that's what we celebrate on Ascension Sunday. They're going back to the Father. And he did that so that we could be made clean. We could be made holy so the Holy Spirit could live in us. All makes sense so far? Now this is where it gets interesting. Because the revelation that came to me was that of course we say and we understand that Jesus cleansed the sins for the whole world. All creation, it says in the Bible, is made holy and clean through Jesus Christ. So that doesn't just mean the people that existed after Jesus. It means everybody who existed before as well. They are also cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. It wasn't just for those that came after Jesus. It wasn't like, I'm sorry you lot, everybody for the last millennia, 50 millennia or whatever, you, you know, you're not cleansed by Jesus. No, no. When Jesus came, the incarnation becomes even more important, even more incredible. Because it was for everyone, forever, for all time. For everyone who ever had existed, everyone who existed at the time of Jesus, and everybody who existed in the future. And that's good orthodox theology. Jesus came, for, died for the sins of the whole world forever and for all time, for all creation. He was, after all, the creator. Remember? Everything in the world was made through Jesus Christ, through the second person of the Holy Trinity. It's right there in John's Gospel. All things were made through him. And he came to save us. Wow. The incarnation. That 33-year period of, of Jesus' life. The incarnation was to save all humanity for all time. But here's the thing. If Jesus came so that the Holy, so, and went back to the Father on the Ascension Day so that he could send the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, that we could be filled with the Holy Spirit, it made sense to me that actually he, that meant that if everybody was cleansed for all time, whoever has existed, who exists and whoever will exist, that they too could be filled with the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? How could the Holy Spirit exist in a world, in a broken world, when there's sin. Sin and holiness don't go together. How can the Holy Spirit exist in us if we're not made clean? That's the whole point of the gospel. We're dirty, we're made clean. God can make his presence in us by his Holy Spirit. And so that's why the kings of Israel could be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's why the psalmist says, how can I flee from your, from your Holy Spirit? I can't, your Holy Spirit is right, you're right with me, your right hand is with me, guiding me. It's why Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount said, hey, do you know what? If you ask for a, 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 an egg, will your father give you a stone? No. How much more when you ask will the, God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? He didn't say, how much more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask when I've given the Holy Spirit in a few years' time when it comes at Pentecost? No. In the here and now. The incarnation of Jesus Christ, that second person of the Holy Trinity for all time becomes even more special even more precious. Now, I don't know why God chose 2,000 years ago. Maybe it's because that was the first time that the whole of humanity would be reached with the message and the good news of Jesus Christ. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But Jesus came for all humanity for all time. And if you like, that thing that was affected in the physicality 2,000 years ago affected all creation, past, present, and future. And it makes the incarnation even more special, even more precious. It's why the Holy Spirit was hovering over the waters in the beginning. It's why the Holy Spirit's been working in the world. It's why the Holy Spirit is here now. It's why it came at Pentecost and filled everybody. And it's why we can be filled now and will fill people in the future. It's why the people could say, yes, we're going to be resurrected in the future. Before Jesus had even come and, and shown that resurrection happens, people believed in resurrection because he affected it at that point 2,000 years ago. And it stretched back to the beginning of time and it stretches forwards to the end of time when we look forward to Jesus coming again. 
the incarnation becomes even bigger, even better than even I imagined. And when I start to read the Old Testament, I start to go, oh, that makes sense to me now. That makes sense to me. Now, of course, our revelation of God has changed over time. Our understanding of God. They didn't understand the Holy Trinity back then. They didn't really understand. But when we look back through Scripture, we can see God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know, the ch- even after Jesus, it took 500 years for the church to really clock that God was Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The doctrine of the Holy Trinity didn't come about till later. Our understanding of God didn't come till later. But when we look back through Scripture, we go, well, of course God's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? But the revelations are coming. And we'll have more revelations in the future of what God's character is like, what God is like. When, God, when Jesus comes the second time, that'll be another revelation. We'll go, oh, okay, that's what God is like. It's why we can say with certainty that those who have gone before us will be resurrected on the last day. It's why we can say with certainty that the Holy Spirit is at work in the world. God is at work today in each one of us, in each one of you through the power of his Holy Spirit. You are made clean and holy by Jesus Christ. That incarnation that took place 2,000 years ago, Jesus living, dying and rising from the dead, made you clean and holy, made all creation clean and holy so the Holy Spirit could start and continue the Holy Spirit's work in the world, so that we could work together with God, see the world through God's eyes, minister to each other through the power of God, for the restoration of the world. That's where it's all heading. That consummation when Jesus comes again. We get a foretaste. It's why Paul said, we have a guarantor now, the Holy Spirit, of what is to come. And he says it about three times, twice in 1 Corinthians, once in Ephesians. It's why the psalmist says, where can I flee from your spirit? I can't. Because your Holy Spirit's been here for all time and for me and for you. This week, and so as I was thinking about this, and like I said, I'm going on a slight theological limb there, and you may think, oh, I don't agree with that, Gav. Hey, that's good. Let's talk, let's talk about it. It's challenging me, and I'm still processing. I'm going, yeah, this is amazing. It makes what Jesus did even bigger and better than I thought it was, if it could possibly be. It wasn't about me just getting into heaven one day. It's about God working in and through the world by his spirit, because we're made clean and holy. And as I thought about it this week, I thought, I just started to, God started to remind me of all the connections in my own life, all the encounters, all the miracles that happen on a daily basis. And I want you to think about that today. Think about your own life. Do you think you are here by chance? Do you think you're here by accident because the Holy Spirit is at work in your lives, in and around your lives, living in you and working around you? for God's purposes every encounter you have every relationship we need to be on the lookout for what God is doing and join in because God is at work I'm reminded I was remi- and I was just thinking and I was reminded this week just this week of our dear friend uh, who's a member of our supper club that we run on a Thursday and she had some really bad news this week she was told that she's you know, on the, I guess pre-diabetic, I don't know what the word is. It was critical. Got to stop sugar. Got to stop carbohydrates immediately. She was like, oh, what am I going to do? And my gorgeous wife, Helen, has been helping another friend with her keto diet and knows how to do keto food and made her all this food. And to help her out, she's given her two weeks' worth of food. <laughs> all keto, all filling, all good, all healthy. And I just thought, what are the chances of you being put in this person's life at this moment, at this time, to be able to do that? And that's just one tiny strand of many, many, many strands, interwoven strands in our lives. Look out for it. Look out for what God is doing in your life, because the Holy Spirit is at work. Next week, we celebrate Pentecost. And yes, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, where people realized, if you like, the revelation that God's Holy Spirit could fill us because of what Jesus affected through his life, death, and resurrection. He says, I'm going back to the Father so I can send the Holy Spirit to you for all time, for everywhere. For everywhere. It's, it's this amazing thing that God is outside of time, but it affects all time, all people, in all places. God is with us, literally, through his Holy Spirit. So this week, may you know the presence of God in your lives. May you know the Holy Spirit working in through you. When you wake up in the morning, I don't know if you're like me, and you wake up in the morning and you go, I'm going to go to work today. (laughs) 
Or do you wake up in the morning and go, hey, God, what amazing encounters. What people are you going to put in my way today? So I'm going to be able to minister to you or who's going to minister to me? What incredible coincidences are going to, God incidences are going to happen today because you are literally at work in our lives. I'm going to finish with this, this tiny, I didn't go, I didn't look at my notes at all. It's probably, if you want to hear the proper talk, I'll record it and we'll put it out (laughs) on our website or you can read it in the Gazette on Saturday, the the formal one. But I love this. The the Psalm, I think it's 133 if I remember. Uh, I just remember the quote. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Isn't that just so true? I count myself blessed to be part of this wonderful church community. A fellowship of friends all connected to God through the incarnation of Jesus Christ and guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless you all. Let's sing a hymn that just kind of cements that. And I'm glad Ruth's here today because it's Ruth's favorite. Let's stand and sing Blessed Assurance. Please sit or kneel for our prayers. Good morning. Holy God, we thank you for the incarnation of Jesus, who, for all humanity, washed away our sin and made us clean and who, with the Father, sent the Spirit to be our advocate and guide. Help us to discern where you are at work in the world and to join in with the restoration of all things. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, as the G7 countries meet on their final day in Japan, May unity and justice prevail. May they work towards peace with Russia and Ukraine, nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation, averting climate change and protection of the environment. We pray that the wildfires in Canada would abate and for a positive outcome in in the Turkish elections where human rights and democracy are upheld. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear your prayer. Father, we lift to you our island community and ask specifically that you would continue to heal Marco and Antoine involved in the serious bike collision. And for the family and friends of Marco killed and found in Hamilton Parish. We ask that you inspire the government to do more to protect the public on our roads and keep us all safe. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for our church here in Bermuda and for the many expressions of your character and love communicated through God's people. We ask that you continue to bless our Bishop Nick, all our clergy and lay readers, and our wardens and vestry members. We lift to you those that have faithfully served on your vestry and who are standing down today. For Vernon, Peter, Barbara, Helen, and Felicia, and we ask that you pour out your blessings on those that are standing today, including Nikki, Angie, Shireen, Jane, and Annie. May our AGM be a celebration of all you are doing through and amongst us as we faithfully serve you, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now lift to you those that need a touch of your love and bring them to mind. Bring them all the support and encouragement they need. May they know the presence of your life-giving spirit with them. Breathe on them new life and hold them in your loving arms. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for those prayers. Brilliant. Uh, notices today. Um, Really, uh, just that we've got a really exciting refreshment uh, happening in about a couple of minutes over in the church hall. Please do make your way over there. Uh, there may well be cake. And also that uh, afterwards at 11 o'clock we have our annual general meeting. And it's a really exciting meeting. You might think, oh my goodness, annual general meetings aren't that, usually that exciting. This is going to be an exciting one because we celebrate those that are coming off vestry. We thank God for them. And we uh, praise God for those that are coming on vestry and all the work and ministry and mission of St. Mark. So that's at 11 o'clock. Uh, the biggie is next week, uh, 28th of May at 3 o'clock in the Botanical Gardens, our Pentecost in the Park. It's going to be amazing. We've got Bishop Nick being 10 years of his consecration, celebrating that. We've got an archbishop coming. Of course, it's Pentecost, the, the giving out of the Holy Spirit to the whole church, and people that revelation that we can be filled with God's Spirit, and God's Spirit is going to be manifest in the world. And we also have um, an archbishop coming to speak, which is exciting, and free food. Did I mention the free food? <laughs> It's going to be really great. So I do recommend that to you. We've got some, uh, I think St. Mark's Choir are going to be singing and Darcyson Choir. And we're going to, it's just, please come, please, please come. Three o'clock, Botanical Gardens next week and bring your friends too. Let's pray our dismissal prayer together. Dear Father, as we go from this place, may we be servants for Christ and people who bring your love. May we know your peace and serve you with all our hearts. In the name of Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, remain with you always, all those that you love too. Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn now before we go, King of Kings, Majesty. Would you please stand?
Let us go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Bless you all and have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you.